Ben and Kessler filed this story. In a special meeting Tuesday, the Mono County Board of Supervisors expected to approve a letter to the Public Utility Commission complaining that Verizon failed to meet the deadline to provide broadband internet service to Crowley Lake and Swall Meadows. Now, last August, the California Public Utilities Commission adopted a resolution which granted Verizon $286,398 to buy equipment to complete the internet project. Now, the targeted completion date was Monday, January 28th, 2013. Last week, Verizon requested a 12-week extension. County officials said Verizon claimed a delay in another upgrade needed for the Mono County project has caused a delay for Crowley and Swall. Now, the requirement to provide these small communities with expanded internet service was actually a penalty in lieu of a fine as a result of Verizon overheading a fiber optic line within the Highway 395 scenic corridor without prior approval. Now, the Mono Board's proposed letter says Verizon's time extension request is, quote, unreasonable, unnecessary, and should be denied, end quote. Officials point out that residents have anticipated the DSL service for 18 months and, quote, have been told multiple times that the project was on track, end quote. Mono County's GIS coordinator Nate Greenberg wrote a letter to the PUC to suggest that the penalty imposed on Verizon for failure to complete the project on time should be service to the community of Paradise. Now, on another broadband issue, Praxis officials building Digital 395 plan to ask Mono County for permission to remove snow on Green Creek and Dunderbird Meadows, Meadow Roads to access vaults to install fiber optic cable before February 15th when sage grouse begin to nest there. Now, the Mono Board also scheduled closed sessions. Now, in one of those private sessions, the supervisors were set to discuss what to do about the lack of an interim county administrator. Last week, board members said they might call on a current employee to fill in when CAO Jim Arkins leaves at the end of the week. Then they would look for an interim CAO and proceed with the selection process of a permanent CAO. Now, the board also scheduled a closed session regarding the director of facilities and risk management. Now, that is Rita Sherman, who announced her retirement as of February 5th. Well, Bennett Kessler filed this report. A wildlife protection group and many others are calling for the Department of Fish and Wildlife, previously Department of Fish and Game, to change its ways. Many citizens in the eastern Sierra have publicly and privately expressed the same thing when it comes to bears and mountain lions. Now, State Senator Jerry Hill came up with a bill on the heels of a controversial story in Half Moon Bay in his district where fish and wildlife war wardens shot and killed two baby mountain lions who had wandered into a populated area. Now, according to media there, a public outcry arose when an examination of the two cubs revealed that they were much younger and smaller than the wardens claimed. Reports said the baby animals were four months old, weighed 13 or 14 pounds, and were starving. Wildlife protection groups said the baby cats should have been tranquilized and rescued. Now, Senator Hill's plan would reportedly require game wardens to use non-lethal methods unless there is a dire threat to public safety. It would also allow fish and wildlife officials to work with wildlife groups to capture the animals. Now, in response to the Half Moon Bay lion shootings, Fish and Wildlife Director Charlton Bonham is quoted in the Huffington Post as saying, quote, Prior to the incident at Half Moon Bay, I directed the department's leadership team to evaluate our guidelines on how we respond to interactions with mountain lions and bears and determine how we can do better, end quote. Now, that statement apparently applies to management of bears in the eastern Sierra. One incident, in particular in Mammoth Lakes, upset residents and bear managers. Fish and Game had refused to rescue two bear cubs who were still suckling their mother when she was killed in a traffic accident. Over a period of days, wildlife specialist Steve Searles and a Mammoth police officer strongly maintained the cubs would die if not rescued. The Tahoe Bear Rescue Organization had agreed to take the baby animals. Fish and Game staunchly refused.
Sierra Wave Media will check with Fish and Wildlife about changes in policy based on the director's statement. Well, to increase the reward fund designed to help capture the thieves and vandals who stole, defaced, uh, who stole and defaced ancient petroglyphs near Bishop, the Bishop Paiute tribe has launched a fundraising raffle. Now, the Petroglyph Reward Fund raffle features a framed photo by Brett Wiley of the Hamill Valley petroglyphs during a winter storm. Tickets are now available at Toyabe Indian Health Project. That's located at 52 Tusu Lane in Bishop. And tickets may also be purchased at downtown Bishop businesses. Sierra Wave Media will let you know when we get a list of that. The Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association had set up a fund for a reward and for purchase of surveillance cameras and training of site stewards. At last count, the fund had grown to just under $10,000, most for a reward. Debbie Iltz of the association said donors have been, quote, very passionate about finding who did this, end quote. In fact, news of the petroglyph thefts and damage hit news outlets worldwide. Greg Haverstock, the BLM archaeologist in Bishop, confirmed that the rock art is thousands of years old and part of the current Paiute tribe's ceremonial tradition. Haverstock said Europeans documented the rock art prior to 1890, and geological evidence shows them to be thousands of years old. At least four petroglyphs were completely cut out of the rock, and dozens of other artworks were scarred by hammer strikes and saw cuts. The thieves are believed to have used ladders, electric generators, and power saws to steal the ancient art. The Eastern Sierra Interpretive Association continues to receive donations, and you can check out their website, esiaonline.com, or give a call to 760-873-2411. Now, if you would like to get some more information on the raffle tickets, that number is 760-873-8464. Raffle tickets are $5 each or 5 for $20, and winners do not need to be present to win. Well, Mammoth Hospital Auxiliary is inviting community members to join them as they share happy memories and celebrate the life of Jean Stanley, who passed away December 24th. Now, the celebration of life is set for this Wednesday, January 30th, from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Mammoth Lakes Community Center on Forest Trail. Jean Stanley was an institution in Mammoth Lakes for over 50 years and known by nearly everyone. She was a charter and founding member of the Mammoth Hospital Auxiliary and served on the board until 2012. She led the community drive to pass the bonds that resulted in the construction and opening of Mammoth Hospital in 1978. Jean served as a hospital district board member in the formative years alongside other local figures like Dave McCoy. Jean Stanley also gave of her time generously on behalf of other volunteer organizations in the community. And those who shop at the cast off will remember seeing Jean's smiling face every Tuesday and Saturday. She was everyone's mom or grandma. And if you would like to help celebrate the life of this remarkable woman, Jean Stanley, again, that will be Wednesday, 3 p.m. at the Community Center.